Hello, Metric Lands. Welcome to our fifth lesson of geography, ITP tutorials. And today we are looking at the subtropical anticyclones. Wait, what is an anticyclone? Well, I'm sure you know now that a cyclone is a low pressure cell. So an anticyclone is a high pressure cell. That's what we'll be looking at today. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so by the end of the lesson, we should be able to list and explain the location of three high pressure cells that affect South Africa. Number two, discuss the general characteristics of these high pressure cells. And lastly, discuss and explain anticyclone S circulation around South Africa and how these three high pressure cells affect the climate of South Africa. Okay, guys, so let us look at the location of these three high pressure cells. Island is very important to know what any two are located over the oceans and one is located inland. Let us look at the diagram to better explain this. So, in Jongobon Alan, we've got the map of South Africa, and here are the three high pressure cells of Kurumangao. Yokala is this one that is called the South Antarctic High. Why is it called the South Atlantic High? It's because it's found in the Atlantic Ocean. It's been here, it's found in the Indian Ocean, hence it's called the South Indian High. It's found within the continent. So it's called the Continental High or the Kalahari High, sometimes also referred to as the Interior High. So I bet you're wondering why in Gitobe map I'm clearly sight to go blue, clearly sight to go red. Okay, let me ask you a question before I come back. Uh, between the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean, which one is warm, which one is colder? Very good, the Atlantic Ocean is colder, which is why clearly sight to wanna Gitobe go blue in map I'm. And the Indian Ocean is warm, which is why I drew it in seven so red. Such a picture a lot, such we cover more details in the next lesson. What our man young fun was, what in if we were to cut our South Africa in half here, Indian High Galana, when the air moves from this Indian High towards the the land, it brings a lot of moisture because the ocean is warmer, hence we would have experienced a lot and lot of evaporation. Kakwa wumoyo swala or zangala towards the land, it contains the moisture, which is why the eastern part of South Africa experienced more rainfalls than the western side. So the western side is drier where this side is wet. Got us also cover and more details local being funuk bag and just tombe no one manch. Okay, so as per the general characteristics of these anticyclones, they form in the subtropics in the high pressure zone, which means now they're influenced by the 30 degree latitude, which is our subtropical high, the boundary of the Hartley and Ferris cell. I'm sure you have a logo from your grade 11 content. They are associated with subsiding air. Kumbul, what a low pressure previous society, we've got rising air because it's hot there. So with high pressure, we've got subsiding air because it's cold. That's what subsiding air means. Subsiding means the same thing as sinking. Okay? They're associated with dry air and clear sky. Obviously now, because there's no evaporation, the air is not rising, there are no clouds that would be forming. So that's why we've got clear skies. On the Earth's surface, air diverges away from the high pressure cells is the opposite of what happens with low pressure with low pressure that air converges so with high pressure the air diverges away from the high pressure it diverges in jet because it's going towards the low pressure remember from grade 11 with the pressure gradient it says Air always from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. That's why I said with high pressure, we've got divergence, whereas with low pressure, we've got convergence. Don't forget that. The wind spiral out of the high pressure in an anticlockwise direction. This is simply the opposite of what happens with low pressure. So, to be specific, this is our high pressure again. So, the wind spiral out. Out in an anti-clockwise 
direction. I'm sure you can bowl goti. It's the opposite of what happens in the northern hemisphere. You won't get into Kumangaya. Mostly, it's what happens in the southern hemisphere. The continental high cell, which is known as the Kalahari cell, exists over the interior and dominates the weather conditions within South Africa because it is at the center of South Africa. Oonyo, which is very important to remember about the Kalahari High is that it is higher in the atmosphere in summer and then it is lower and stronger in winter. Okay, so in other words, so if I'm to simplify this for you guys is that, okay, let's say this is the Earth's surface. I don't know if this is clear. So in Kalahari High, it in summer, it moves upward this way. You would find it. It's weaker because in summer it's very, very hot. Some of the air, if not most of the air, is rising up. Hence, our high pressure cell moves upwards. Then, in winter, because it's very, very cold, the high pressure cell is going to be found close to the air surface because the air continuously subsides, causing the high pressure cell to be stronger on the air surface. Local obviously, because you have high pressure cells, they are also known as anticyclone. Okay, now let us look at how all of these three high pressure cells affect the climate of South Africa. First, we're going to look at the South Antarctic High. When the South Antarctic High is on the south edge of the country, ahead of the frontal depression, it deflects the depression in the southeasterly direction and prevents it from reaching the land. And mostly, this is what happens in summer let us look at this diagram to better explain what i'm saying so nancy high pressure cell to learn ahead of the frontal depression which means in front of our frontal depression what is the frontal depression very good it's a mid latitude cyclone because it contains the cold and the warm front so say now we call front e mid latitude cyclone here to here. okay and by the way kumbuluti image latitude cyclone is a low pressure cell okay and what do you know about our pressure gradient the pressure gradient says air always move from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure now when got low pressure it is uh, towards the land né? because there are winds or air moving from this high pressure towards the low pressure the wind is going to deflect say low pressure to see long to move yala pana towards the land the wind coming from this high pressure is going to deflect this mid latitude cyclone towards the southeast. This is what happens mostly in summer. That's why I'm a mid latitude cyclone and a Cape Town in summer. The exact opposite of this can also happen. Let me erase this get Kazelion. So what happens if our South Antarctic high is behind the cold front? It's going to reinforce the cold front or the mid latitude cyclone to move even further towards the land. So this time, say, here is our high pressure cell here. And then we've got a mid latitude cyclone coming this direction. It's moving again from the 60 degree latitude, moving towards the land. Now, because the high pressure cell is here, it's going to reinforce the mid latitude cyclone to move even further towards the land I, I hope you get it here are the two diagrams showing you what i was explaining to you on the previous slide so lana at a you can see what high pressure a2 is deflecting the mid latitude cyclone okay then lana this is when the high pressure reinforces the mid latitude cyclone it accelerates the mid latitude cyclone to move even further towards the land let us look at how the south indian high influences the climate of south africa now we say it causes onshore, northeasterly or southeasterly winds to blow over the eastern parts of South Africa. What does onshore mean? Um, onshore means from the ocean towards the land. So the winds are going to move from east towards west, northeasterly or southeasterly. That simply means from east to west. Now, if you see simplify, I learned all that. Let me draw a diagram of South Africa. Like, Okay, so this is a diagram with South Africa. We've got the high pressure with South Indian high Lana, and the winds are going to move from this high pressure towards South Africa because we'll be having temporal low pressures within the land because it was a the land heats more quicker than the water. So while we have a high pressure Lana, we'll be having low pressure. 
and again let it depend on pressure gradient here to turn a move from a region of high pressure towards a region of low pressure Maja and Kalukumbu Lambe stay at the beginning of our lesson. Stay here, warm is the Indian or the Antarctic Ocean. Very good. Stay Indian Ocean is warm. The next bullet is dependent on remembering that these winds blow over a warm ocean, hence, they contain moisture. They are moving from this high pressure towards the land through a warm ocean. That means this ocean now experiences a lot and lot of evaporation which causes the winds that are moving from this high pressure towards the land to contain moisture hence they are going to cause rainfalls on the eastern parts of south africa in Gakko, at the beginning of our lesson we said the eastern parts of south africa experiences more rainfalls than the western part okay let us look at how the kalahari high influences the climate of south africa we're saying it brings cloudless dry conditions within the plateau of south africa in winter what is the plateau well uzokumbula from grade 11 a map of south africa so from grade 11 side the interior of south africa is made up of this high lung area which is known as the plateau so a high pressure cell here is found here within this interior interior that's why it is going to bring frost and dry and cloudless condition within this plateau because we've got a high pressure cell here in the interior of south africa winds are going to blow offshore that means from land towards the ocean now kumbulu to stay onshore is from ocean to land so offshore is from land to ocean okay bear winds are common at this time of the year because of this kalahari high kanjani what are peg winds peg it's a word taken from the african language which means mountain so these are winds that are moving from the mountains towards the low lying areas now there are problems associated with the map winds guys because they are dry so cousin our next lesson high pressure cells migrate north in winter Hence, the cold front of mid latitude cyclones reach the southwest coast, bringing cold and rainy conditions on the Western Cape. So, this is related to what we did in grade 11, guys. Our combo already set up at the ITCZ. Site ITCZ in summer, it moves towards the southern hemisphere. Then, in winter, it moves towards the northern hemisphere. So, now, Wong and Amanti cyclones are screaming out in In summer, they move towards the southern hemisphere. Then, in winter, they move upwards towards the northern hemisphere. So, Klananja, Nalento Langisho, and Jamani meet that cyclone as painless tombelesi, Konazoaz, which we will see understand that. So, this is winter, and as you can see, I'm a high pressure says lawa. They've moved towards the northern hemisphere. Abongota Pezulu, if you compare them to this one right here. And the Lana in summer, I'm a high pressure says Zeto, they've moved. Towards the southern hemisphere. Mawa pega. Na in the little look to you born in the Pega lay out the south Indian high. You get to a boy like it contains exactly in Madagascar. Whereas in this case, it is a bit below in Madagascar. Gakawa in winter, our friend, the mid latitude cyclone there, when it's moving towards the western Cape to bring those rainfalls that it brings to the western Cape province, a high pressure here to the south Atlantic high here is not there to block the mid latitude cyclone as you can see what it it's a bit towards the north that's why the mid latitude cyclone will be able to move and reach the western cape province lab whereas in summer here's our friend again the mid latitude cyclone it's moving towards the western cape again doing what it always does but unfortunately this time the south atlantic high is a bit towards south and what is it going to do? Very good. It's going to block the mid latitude cyclone because of the winds moving from it now. It's going to block the mid latitude cyclone when it reaches this point. And it's going to be deflected. Do you get that? I hope you do, guys. Back to our slide again. So, in summer, the low pressure cell over the land. Kumbulti stenge summer, ikalahari height becomes weaker and move up the atmosphere. Kakoge, we are left with a low pressure. This low pressure can cause 
northeasterly and southeasterly winds to converge lapana the center of south africa yetu. and what's going to happen when we've got convergence we're going to have air rising the air that rises is going to cool up the atmosphere condense and bring our rainfalls so for the last time guys can we please look at this diagram if a question was to come out in the exam or test or assignment and the question is which season is represented in this diagram what would you say summer or winter summer no it's not summer guys it's winter okay it's winter and how do we know it's winter because at the continent here there's a high pressure if it's summer it would be represented by a a low pressure please do not forget that and this brings us to the end of our lesson i hope you managed to learn a lot i'll see you on our next tutorial where we'll be looking at the traveling disturbances associated with these subtropical anticyclones stay tuned stay blessed bye, -bye. <laughs>